Wow, so like, we come up and we're walking through these woods. And look at that, look at how you gonna, if they're sitting up there, and oh, my enemy. Surprise attack. It was called the First World War by Winston Churchill. The Seven Years' War included fighting in Europe, the Caribbean, the Philippines, India, and Africa. It was the North American portion of the conflict that became known as the French and Indian War. In 1753, Virginia Governor Robert Dinwiddie dispatched 21-year-old George Washington to southwestern Pennsylvania with a written order to French forces to vacate the contested territory of the Ohio Valley. When the French refused, Lieutenant Colonel Washington returned the following year with a force of hundreds and ambushed a small scouting party before dawn on May 28, 1754. The first military action of Washington's life resulted in the deaths of 13 enemy soldiers and launched the French and Indian War. Washington was forced to surrender his makeshift garrison, Fort Necessity, on July 3rd, 1754. And the following year, he was part of British General Edward Braddock's disastrous expedition to southwestern Pennsylvania. Two decades after fighting to extend the dominion of King George III, over the North American frontier, Washington would lead the armed rebellion to expel the king's forces. A key role in the beginning of the French and Indian War was played by the Seneca chief, the half-king, Tanacharison, who possessed a strong dislike for the French, who he states killed his father. Tanacharison had been captured as a child and was probably born Cataba, but the Seneca adopted and raised him. He grew strong in stature and was chosen by the Haudenosaunee, or the Iroquois, to lead the American Indians living in the Ohio River Valley, taking up residence there about 1747. With tensions rising between the French and the British, he sided with the British, who gave the title Half King. And as early as 1752, told the Virginians they should build a strong house at the forks of the Ohio. When the French began building their forts in the region in 1753, Tanach Harrison sent messages to them to leave. Later, he accompanied Washington on his mission to deliver Dinwiddie's message to Fort LaBeouf, telling the French to abandon their forts. The next year, on May 27th, Tanacharison sent a message to Washington in the Great Meadows that a party of French soldiers were camped nearby. The next morning, Washington and the Half King surrounded the French camp, and in the ensuing fight, the French commander, Ensign Jumonville, was wounded. As Jumonville was trying to surrender, Tanacharison went up to him and said, Thou art not dead, my father. Then he raised his tomahawk and killed him. With that act, the half king set in motion the events that began the war between the two great empires. Little was known about Tanacharison's early life. His special importance lies in the role he played in events leading to the outbreak of Anglo-French hostility in 1754. The thrust of English traders like George Crogan into the country between the Upper Ohio River Valley and the Great Lakes about 1745 occasioned a realignment of some Indian groups in that area. 
following the defection from the French alliance of the Huron chief Orontoni. Segments of this tribe in the Miamis moved from the borders of the lakes to the branches of the Ohio. Tanner Terrison makes his first documented appearance as Tanner Rico as one of the six signers of a 1747 letter in Krogan's handwriting, reporting a treaty between the British Mingos and Shawnees and the Enomi Nation, or Miamis. One of the other Mingo signers was Aneda Skarodi, who handled relations between the Iroquois and the Shawnees, and was one of Tana Charison's closest associate. The Iroquois Council at Onondaga near Syracuse, New York, regarded its Ohio settlers, the Mingos, as warriors with no authority to hold formal councils. They had no recognized council fire and no designated speaker or king in the current usage. However, Pennsylvania and Virginia's interest in trade and, in Virginia's case, in obtaining land for settlement encouraged direct dealings with the Ohio Indians rather than with Onondaga Council. However, Pennsylvania and Virginia's interest in trade, and in Virginia's case, in obtaining land for settlement, encouraged direct dealings with the Ohio Indians rather than with the Onondaga Council. In April 1748, Krogan delivered on behalf of Pennsylvania a present of goods to the Ohio Indians, and in September, the Indian agent Johann Conrad Weiser delivered a larger present to which Virginia also contributed. The later occasion seems to have established Logstown or Ambridge, Pennsylvania as a council place, and at this same meeting, Tanach Harrison is identified as the Half King, a title obviously of English origin. The French equivalent, Le Demeroy, appears only in translations and presumably defined his role as that of spokesman for the Iroquois colonist on the Ohio. At this meeting, Tana Charison and his associates, as new beginners in council matters, requested a supply of wampum, which was one of the essential evidences of the validity of an Indian treaty. Tana Charison was a spokesman at the conference held at Logstown by Krogan in May 1751 and at another in June 1752, when Virginia sought ratification of a land secession. French military occupation of the Upper Ohio, beginning in 1753, brought Tanacharison's career to a troubled climax. Persuaded that British friendship and protection assured the greatest benefits to the Ohio Indians, he sought to unite the tribes in opposition to the French presence. Not all agreed with him, however, and his support dwindled in the face of the determined French action. The Indians made three formal protests. At these meetings, both Tanacharison and Scorority insisted that they were acting not for the Iroquois Council, but for the warriors on the Ohio. Tanacharison advised the English traders to leave the Ohio, emboldened perhaps by Marin's death, however, and two other chiefs, Jessica Kaki and Kakawasa Tariant, accompanied Major George Washington on his trip to Fort de la Riviere à Boeuf, Waterford, Pennsylvania, with a Virginia demand that the French depart. Rebuffed again, Tana Charison returned to Logstown on the 15th of January, 1754, escorted by a French detachment under Michel Mary de Le Chavrenier, which set up a temporary post nearby. In the following month, Tana Charison joined some Virginians to erect a fort at the site of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and aided them until they surrendered on the 18th of April to Claude Pierre Picardy de Contrecoeur, who proceeded to build Fort Duquesne there. A Virginia detachment under Washington was dispatched to reassert English authority 
in the region. On the way, the troops were joined by Tana Charison, and on the 28th of May, he took part with them in an attack on the party of French near the present Jamonville, Pennsylvania. The leader of the French, Joseph Colon de Viers de Jamonville, was killed reputedly by Tana Charison himself. Washington withdrew a few miles to the Great Meadows near Farmington, Pennsylvania, and hastily built Fort Necessity in anticipation of French retaliation. On the 1st of June, Tana Charison and some 80 to 100 Mingos joined him, but left before he surrendered on the 4th of July to the French siege. The Indians made their way first to the site of Cumberland, Maryland, and then to Ogwick, or Shirleysburg, Pennsylvania, where Krogan had his trading post. After summoning Delaware and Shawnee leaders to this place for a conference, Tana Charison himself went on to John Harris's post, from which he accompanied Conrad Weiser back to Ogwick for a council September 4th through September 6th, aimed at securing the Delawares and Shawnees in the English interest. The attempt failed. These Indians could not leave the Ohio, and Pennsylvania could not protect them there. Most of the refugee Iroquois remained in Ogwick. At the end of the month, however, Scarrardi brought the half-king and his family in poor health to Harris, where Tana Charison died on October 4th. Virginia and Pennsylvania promptly recognized Scarrardi as the new half-king, but his journeys to New York to seek help from Sir William Johnson, the superintendent of Northern Indians, left the actual leadership of the group unsettled, and as as late as January 1756, a matter of dispute. The name Tana Charison isn't well known outside of historical loyalist circles, but the role he played in helping young Washington and his army was ever so valuable in helping bring forth the nation that we now call the United States of America. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to this channel for more exploring the American frontier. Thanks, guys.